Hello guys and welcome to today's viability review. This time around we're going to be re um, reviewing Sean Kui. Sean is the mage obviously. Uh, a pretty tangy mage, traditionally played in solo and in mid. Now I think Sean has potential um, and you guys wanted to see it. So I figured why not play a few games or just finish playing three games with Sean. And I'm kind of going to give my opinion here. So if you don't know what viability review is, it's basically me reviewing on, uh, like non-traditional uh, unorthodox picks in the support role. We've already reviewed Rajin and Nasha and seeing you guys, a lot of you guys wanted to see Sean. I decided let's go ahead and do Sean. Um, so that's, that's viability review real fast. We talk about what the pros are, the cons. We talk about the bills, some of my games, like what what's anything specific that's worth noting. And uh, then we're gonna talk, like make make a conclusion. Is this guard good or no? So today's guard, obviously Sean. Um, Sean's passive is actually a pretty good support passive. Um, it's where he stacks his backup, his demon back, and he gains two protections for a max of 20. So when that's fully stacked, that's 40 protection. Now 40 protection is super sick, honestly, uh, for, for a guardian passive. I, I believe it's both uh, protections. Uh, yeah, it, it is so. Getting 40 protections is really sick. Now, what kind of sucks for me with, with this passive is that obviously you lose all the stacks. I, I guess it's worth mentioning it's actually 80 protection when you're old because the stack doubles when you're old and then you lose them after the old is done. It's the only way you lose it. Uh, what what really sucks for me about uh, Sean when I played him is it's, it's generally it's pretty hard to to like stack the passive because you don't really want to steal your stacks from your DLC. Your mid lane is probably stacking warlocks. You want to get your guardians blessing if you have that. You want to get your thieves if you're building that. So it's really hard to find somewhere to stack it without screwing something else up. So I think that's a really big downside. There's no like, okay, I can just take this because I'm solo, I'm mid, and I don't give a shit if my support is gonna <laughs> get any last hits or whatever because he doesn't want that. But when you're a support, you can't really do that. So that's like one big minus to to this passive and like uh, him in general, which I've noted. Uh, Exposed evil, his one obviously is a is a twenty percent slow. Uh, I built gem of ISO. So how much is that? It's like 40, 50 percent. I can't remember gem of ISO slow. It's like twenty five, right? Let me figure it out right now. Yeah, it actually slows for twenty five percent. So it's a it's it could it's a possibility of forty five percent slow. Although soft cap for slow is forty percent, I believe. So it's a bit less than that. I might, I might, I may be wrong on that. I'm probably wrong on that. Nah, nah, I think it's 40. Anyway, decent ability, good poking tool, really good at implying a gem of ISO, which is one thing I want to note uh, as, as a support ability. Um, it's actually pretty decent CC. If you can get the full duration, it, it lasts five seconds and that five second 45% slow is really sick. Uh, I had people build wing bit against me and then it did really sucks being Sean because they just kind of run away from you. And Sean is all about running someone down. Uh, his second ability, Exorcism, his two is um, pretty okay. It's like, I would I would, I, I would kind of compare it to a normal Guardian damaging ability, right? Like you have a Ganesha one, a Fafnir Hammer. Like it doesn't stun or anything, it heals you though. And I think the sustain is pretty nice, especially early game. Um, obviously you want to use the one and the two to gain your stacks. It's pretty easy to gain your stacks for the like the first seven levels, and then it starts to get hard because you start one shutting the wave, and you really don't want to do that. Um, so pretty pretty decent heal. I kind of like him. Then we have his uh, third ability. I kind of like the ability. The third ability is Book of Demons. Now this is pretty fucking sick because you you can get Honda's blessing, which I tried and it was really nifty. And then the the second attack like actually procs Hunter's blessing a hundred percent instead of fifty percent. So you're doing a lot of damage. Like Book of Demons is obviously it gives you a second basic attack that's gonna fire for fifty percent of your, your damage. Uh, but 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 Hunter's blessing is not like it doesn't count. So it's it's essentially it's a fifty percent plus Hunter's blessing. So you're doing like over 50% if that makes sense uh, it's a stun as well 1.8 seconds if you have the card or the 9 seconds otherwise uh, I find this I think the passive is really sick that you can just kind of shoot double basics you actually hurt quite a bit it's pretty sick early on um, it's not that good to use it in general use it to interrupt abilities don't use it uh, aggressively in my in my opinion maybe if someone's gonna like jump or dash or get away but try and keep it up most of the time uh, it, the stun is not worth it when it's when it's so low level and and to me if you do, it's like you obvi obviously you want to le level it for the passive right at level level three. Uh, by the way, you max your two on strong support like you go alt two one three, 
uh, and you get your one at level one, and then you get your two at level two, and then you get your three at level three, and then you just two, four, two, two, one, four, two, whatever, you know, keep going. Um, but yeah, Booker Demons, it's pretty shitty that it's on, it's a, such a short range ability, so you really need to get up tight and up close to use it. So it's not like a classic long range stun you'd see on other Guardians, like Terra, Fafnir, uh, even Emir. Uh, Emir's range is like a bit longer. <coughs> Recall Demons is old. This is a really good chase tool for a Guardian, like you can just you just kind of run people down, it's pretty hilarious. You just use it and you just run at, at people and I think that's pretty strong in my opinion. It's, it's You don't really want to kill supports, but you can't really ignore it with the hybrid build I'm doing regardless because it's just strong, right? Like he's actually doing quite a bit of damage with exercise demons and all his abilities and your super tanky and stuff like that. So that's kind of the abilities, I think his abilities has potential for a Guardian, it's not the classic Guardian, it's more of a hybrid all-in, if you pl uh, not Guardian support, if you would play him as that. Um, stats real fast, he has pretty, pretty decent stats, um, like, obviously his, his passive protections aren't through the roof, but he has good health, base MS sucks, but, but that's kind of all mages, right? So he's not the best, he's not the worst, he's not quite hell when it comes to like health and, uh, and prots. Uh, but but he's definitely like not. Uh, let's take a tangy mage. I think he might be the tangiest mage. I don't know. Uh, he should be. One of Xiong's biggest pros, in my opinion, is he's able to deal a lot of damage. And I think he, while he can peel, the best defense is offense. This this term like really applies when it comes to Xiong, right? Because he just runs at you and he does a crap ton of damage. Like you actually almost killing the ADC in the mage late game if they're grouped you're gonna do so much damage in team fight and I think this is a big plus so if you're running a bit of a tanky comp or like a healing comp or something getting getting a strong support is not that bad because you honestly fulfill like a, a really big high like a really big uh, role when it comes to damage like you're doing so much I think Xiong is pretty decent early game. I'm kind of shocked to hear myself say this, but the protections he gets from his one two actually helps out. If you can get, uh, if you can get like away from level one or two, I think level three he's pretty strong, especially with Honda's blessing. If you build that, um, and and from there like he has pretty decent, like he has a pretty decent early game. Besides when his old is down, but I'll get to the cons eventually. Um, but I think his early game is pretty decent. It's not through the roof, but it's definitely a bit above average. He has sustain as well, which is very nice in this current meta in, in, in lane as well. It actually, you can feel it quite a bit. And I, I really like that about him. Um, also, just sustaining when you're doing pushes or something is actually really OP, um, being able to sustain. He has very, very, very good CC when you get your Gem of ISO. Before that, it's kind of mad. You have a slow, you have a short stun. It's kind of it. But when you get Gem of ISO and four abilities that procs it, it's he's just a CC machine, which I think is pretty crazy, um, and I, he's relatively tanky as I talked about or, uh, as well. It's like another pro, right? That he's above your average mage in tankiness just because of his passive and his base stats. So yeah, I definitely think Shong has some very good things to him. Um, he he runs down the enemy team late game, and I I really like that. Now some of the cons Shong has is he has no mobility. He has no like movement speed buffs, he has no jumps, no dashes, no nothing. All he has is like a slow and a stun that you can kind of use when you're getting chased down. You're old as well, I suppose, but it feels kind of bad not having a movement ability, uh, like CC immunity as well, which is pretty OP, like just having that. And you can really outplay people with mobility uh, skills in general, but he doesn't, uh, he doesn't have that. And that's honestly a really, really big cons. Um, as a, I kind of touched on it earlier, he's pretty shitty without his ult. I'm, I'm, I'm having a bad language for this, I'm sorry. He's pretty bad without his ult, right? Like, once you use that, it's it's kind of like this one-trick pony me mentality. Sure, he's not the worst with only his three abilities, but he doesn't really do anything, if you get me. Like, he needs his ult to be be, be relevant, as especially like early game and late, very late game. I think somewhere in the mid game you're probably okay without your ult like you can still just take poke trades and stuff but early game it really matters if you want to fight and late game it really matters because if you don't have it they they if they know you're just gonna get run down uh shong is an all-in guard which is not necessarily a bad thing but it i def i'm gonna list it as a con because it's it again it applies to this one trick pony thing uh, and i kind of dislike that um 
And uh, some, I, I already mentioned this, but like he's another con is he's so up close, right? You really need to be in someone's face. And with the general amount of uh, CC, like crown control reduction and movement speed abilities, uh, like movement abilities in general, in general in smite on carries specifically, it's very hard to run someone down. Like they need to try and punch you, uh, to to like, to for you to achieve the running down potential. So I think that's a big, big, big cons. Like you, it's you're having a really hard time doing damage to anyone than the front line, and they're not really taking damage because you don't have any pen uh, necessarily. So he's like he has super high potential, but in general you just kind of in finding like you find yourself ending up in a really weird spot where you're holding the front line which i think is a big con so i want to talk a bit about builds my experience playing him now for free games uh, i definitely think hunter's blessing is the way to go i tried hunter's blessing i tried guardian's blessing i tried mage's blessing mage's blessing felt pretty bad now i did feed my brains out in that game but like guardian's blessing is always safe it's never bad but i really felt like hunter's blessing Blessing is sick. Again, it works on, on his main basic attack and the other one, and it really allows you to get pressure, and you actually do a, a, a lot of damage with that. So I can really get behind the whole uh, the whole uh, Hunter's Blessing. I think it makes him good early, which could be like a really big con for him. When it comes to the boots, I tried cooldown boots, and it felt horrible. You definitely want Talaris, Talaris right? I, I already mentioned he has very um, low mobility, he has no mobility at all, so getting that 25% movement speed, not only for running people down, but for running away yourself is is, is crucial, so that's definitely wha how you want to go. Now from here, you, you can go like kind of down three paths, you can go straight into Gem of Iso, and like Sphere of the Magus, which I tried, it didn't feel that well, uh, good, I was getting farmed in that game, but it felt super squishy in general, I, I would say try not to do that. Um, you can go hybrid where you go for like a, a, a tank item in to gem of ISO or you could go gem of ISO tank item and then you can go full uh, full defense which would be like tank item tank item tank items could be sovereignty dead emperors void stone hard ward uh, I, I wouldn't recommend going to the thieves and shong just because it feels so bad you you need you want to get your passive stacked and then you want to get thieves stacked and it just oh I felt horrible when I had to stack Phoebes and my passive uh, in the game I played with Phoebes. It, it really didn't feel good at all. So don't build Phoebes on him in support in my opinion. Try and go for like other hybrid uh, kind of items like Voidstone, uh, Jade Emperor, Sovereign Tree, Hardward, uh, Nemean Lion, Spectral Armor, you can get Mandela Discord, Mage's Bliss, not, not Magi's Blessing, excuse me. Winged Blade is really good as well, I think, because you kind of get that movement speed, so if the enemy team has a lot of slows, it's definitely worth it picking up. Shang has two ne like necessary items, Shift Gem of Iso for the slows, and I think Spear of Magus is actually a necessity. Getting that 50 pen, and it's so easy to apply, is actually really, really huge. It means you're going to be doing like pretty much true damage to the, the, the back line, and you want to go fawns as well on Shang, I feel like, because otherwise the back line can just kind of kill you. So if you have fawns, and fawns does magical damage, and they don't have protection, that means Fawns is doing true damage and you're also doing true damage with your abilities and you're going to be a nightmare for, for the enemy backline. So that's the, I think those are two necessity like necessary items and then you want your boots, so you have three necess necessary items. So I think a good build would be like, you have your boots, right? You have your, you have your, uh, what, what you, you have your ISO, you have your Magus, and then I guess you could go like physical defense item, magical defense item, and then situational uh where like physical defense item could be hide of the mimi and spectral armor jade emperor sovereignty magical defense item could be pestilence hard ward uh void stone bulwark not limited you know and uh, your situational item could be mages magi's blessing uh, mantle of discord wing blade or even like a physical of the uh, 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 magical defense item i don't think you go more damage i think you do more than plenty damage with that build uh, relic wise always try and get fawns and the other relic, relic like is pretty situational don't go met i think uh, i tried creeping curse as well it's pretty horrible sprint shell or uh, if you they have an odin or something phantom is what you want to go for blink could be pretty sick but i think you need that utility like sprint honestly felt super satisfying just sprinting into the enemy team uh, I, I really really like that when i tried it so I'd say sprint forms is how you want to go. And that was kind of my experience from the builds. Moving on to the games, uh, I'm going to give a few like impressions of him uh, from what I felt and like a few tips. 
early on, you want to keep your distance, but you also don't want to be scared to like go up because heal actually you can bait a lot with the heal. So keep your distance, but don't be scared if you have a good ADC at the same time to kind of play up. You don't want to be all the way up in, in, in someone's face like a guardian. But, but you don't want to be scared like and just running away. You can kind of backpedal and shoot them in the face uh, if you have Hunter's Blessing, obviously, uh, with Xiong. Another, another like thing I wanted to mention is Xiong is a knock-up and slow immune in his ult, which is super strong. I play against a Cerberus, and you could see me like using that as a as a defensive measure against his ult try try and use that if you if you see if you say like okay i'm gonna get screwed if i'm gonna get knocked up by this Willix right now or like the the, the vulcan meatball and there's an and a, and a Willix in front of you just ult you know just ult for the cc immunity um so i guess he actually he has some cc immunity i might have lied a bit uh, late game pop your sprint Want someone ult and then press phones. Don't just press phones. Just and and make sure if they run away, just turn around. Like you're just wasting your time zoning them. Then if if they're not hitting you, don't press phones. Try and kind of hold it, but but just run people down. You're you're a kamikaze person, honestly. Playing strong, like you you realize you're probably going to die, but your job is to get as much damage off as possible. In my games, I got so much damage. I had top game, a uh, top game, top damage in one of the games. Uh, second highest damage in the other game and the third game was pretty relevant but I still did a lot of damage compared to how fucked I got that game. I did 35k and like 36k and 16k gate uh, damage. Try and utilize that. Don't be scared to look for for like a 1v1s as well with fawns. Um, but that was a bit of my experience. So my conclusion on Xiong is that he's pretty uh, like he could work definitely I could see it work in rank uh, especially if you're in a not, you, not in high tier rank even in high tier rank it could work but if you're in like a pretty okay uh, like gold silver platinum even low diamond you could probably stomp pretty hard with Xiong support if uh, if you get an ADC that's no, that knows what he or she is doing and you get a lead it's actually it's really really sick um mm. People don't really play well into fonts when it comes to ranked and people make frustration plays all the time. People are unorganized, uh, teams are unorganized, which is really good for Xiong. Like he kind of wants to create confusion and that's like even more likely to happen in, in ranked. So I definitely think he works in ranked. Um, can be a ranked stomper. If you get really good at him, I think you can definitely pull it off quite a lot and you can get feared. You might see people start banning your Xiong Kui, right? <clears throat> With that said, I think Xiong, for competitive play, he could work as well, but he would be very team comp specific. You need to make sure that uh, that, that the, the enemy doesn't like have the ability to pick Nem as an example. Nem has always been a Xiong counter, right? Um, and you also just want to make sure that that you, you don't play into like walls or pit against an Emir, that, Emir and that was pretty tough. You, you want to like last pick it if it would ever work in competitive, I think. Um, and it would also be very team specific. As an example, I don't think a team like Dickness has could pull it off, but someone like the old Elevate could definitely pull pull it off. Um, so yeah, I competitive viability, not really. It could work if it's a certain team, but I definitely feel like he felt pretty good. I've, I play casuals when I do these vi viability reviews, but it wasn't that horrible. People, honestly. Um, and it, it felt okay. Like I've I saw some I've seen some of the names before, and it, I think I did fairly well. For like that was one of my first Xiong's game in a while, and it felt good. You know, felt good just running down people. Um, try it in ranked, honestly. Give it a shot. Go with the build I suggested: Thunder's blessing, boots, ISO, defensive item, defensive item, spear of Mac, situational item. Bam, you're good to go. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys, put like to put down a comment below who should i do next who's the next guard that's gonna get some love who should be the new viability review guard and uh, make sure you leave a comment there i know we'll be doing a viability review every tuesday now we're kind of moving towards a more um how do you say it? like uh persistent schedule i guess I, I don't really know the word like a more Every Tuesday we're gonna have a viability review, and every Friday we'll have how to go pro, and every Wednesday we'll have X, and every Thursday we'll have Y in the evening. So Tuesday is kind of be gonna be this viability review thing. Uh, we will be doing one this Friday as well, but this video 
will like the next re- viability review will be recorded before uh, you guys are able to come in. So come and touch the play next Tuesday, and uh, I might just pick your guard. Remember, it can't be a guardian, and it can't be already guards that I think are viable in the support role, which would be Saket, uh, Amaterasu, and Hell, pretty much uh, Nox as well. Um, so just give me give me a comment, give all your crazy suggestions, and as always, guys, I wanted to thank you so much for watching the video. I want I, I want it. I want to thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, press the bell, comment which god you want, and until next time guys, peace out.